Hi everyone, it's Shelly at There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. I can't believe that we are already on the last installment of the Hidden Curriculum series. Seven months? Has it really been seven months since I started this series? It, it has to be because there are seven parts and we're on number seven today. Honestly, it feels like we just started this a few months ago. But you know what? It's almost like they saved the most relevant for last because as I was reading through this part earlier today, I could not help but think about the fact that when John Taylor Gatto wrote this section, he there's no way he could have possibly known how close to the truth he is today because what, what we're going to talk about today, what he is disclosing today it, it has an entirely different meaning than it did when he was writing this. Because today, it's about one can't hide. So as I've done with most of the rest of, of this series, I'm going to start out with what Mr. Gatto has to say himself. So let's get started on that. The seventh lesson I teach is that one can't hide. I teach students that they are always watched that each is under constant surveillance by me and my colleagues. There are no private spaces for children. There is no private time. Class change lasts exactly 300 seconds to keep promiscuous fraternization at low levels. Students are encouraged to tattle on each other or even to tattle on their own parents. Of course, I encourage parents to file reports about their own child's waywardness too. A family trained to snitch on itself isn't likely to conceal any dangerous secrets. I assigned a type of extended schooling called homework so that the effect of surveillance, if not the surveillance itself, travels into private households, where students might otherwise use free time to learn something unauthorized from a father or mother. By exploration or by apprenticing to some wise person in the neighborhood, Disloyalty to the idea of schooling is a devil always ready to find work for idle hands. The meaning of constant surveillance and denial of privacy is that no one can be trusted, that privacy is not legitimate. Surveillance is an ancient imperative espoused by certain influential thinkers, a central prescription set down in the Republic, the City of God, the Institutes of the Christian Religion, New Atlantis, Leviathan, and a host of other places. All the childless men who wrote these books discovered the same thing. Children must be closely watched if you want to keep a society under tight central control. Children will follow a private drummer if you can't get them into a uniformed marching band. So let's talk first of all about what John Taylor Gatto was referring to when he wrote this. And I will finish up with the actual meaning that that has for our surveilled, is that even a word? Our, our society that is constantly under surveillance. It has a completely different meaning to me than when he originally wrote this. But yeah, let, let's first of all, let's discuss what he was talking about here. Kids at school, they, they really do begin to feel and, and they're made to feel like they're constantly being watched, which is funny because if you think about it, they get away with an awful lot. But I think that they always have in the back of their mind this idea that there is like this all seeing eye looking at them. And it's true. He was talking about, you know, you don't let the, the students spend too much time in the bathroom. I just had someone tell me the other day that a friend of hers was telling her, her her daughter goes to public school and they actually have to earn privileges. I think it's tickets. They earn tickets to use the restroom for a completely natural, necessary bodily function. The students in this girl's class now have to earn the privilege by earning tickets to use the restroom. And this whole idea of surveillance, of the fact that someone at school is always watching you and about the fact that they are training families to snitch on one another. You know, I never really thought about that. But as I was reading it, it reminded me of something from when, from when my oldest son was in high school. I remember that 
he used to come home and tell me stories because one of his teachers was actually one of my teachers when I went to that school. And he really liked this teacher. So as when he came home the one day, he was telling me that the teacher just nonchalantly asked the kids, what are your what kind of names do your do your parents call you when you talk back to them? And, you know, everyone in the class thought it was funny. And I remember my son was telling me how every kid went around the classroom and they were saying some sort of profanity that their parent calls them when they get mad at them. And when they got to my son, they asked him, well, what is what does your mom call you? And he's and he said, my mom calls me smarty because I, I don't use profanity. And so I remember he told me that everybody in the class like they, they kind of laughed at him and they looked at him like three heads because here he has this mom who calls him smarty when he when when he would talk back to her and so I thought it was funny at the time because I knew the teacher but you know with the way that things are nowadays in the world and with reading what Mr. Gatto who was a school teacher himself just reading what he has to say about this I can't help but wonder you know was that just a nonchalant conversation or was he, was the teacher trying to, you know, get at some private home life stuff in school? And it's terrible that you have to live like this in the world. You have to kind of feel like you're paranoid about things because there are so many things coming to light about the fact that, you know, not only are school students being watched, but, you know, we are all being watched. And... So, like I mentioned, when he wrote this, we were not at the point in society that we're at now. But, you know, even when you move on to homework, that is something that I don't think a lot of people realize. That homework itself, yes, is a form of surveillance. Now, I, am I saying that a teacher is going to hide in someone's homework and, you know, or put like a little camera in to see what kids are doing? No, not, not that kind of surveillance. But what it is, is as Mr. Gatto said, it has the effect of surveillance. Because if these kids are in school all day long, they come home and they are bringing their work with them. And so they have to constantly focus on getting this additional work done that they're always thinking in the back of their mind, you know, if, if they wouldn't get it done, what would their teacher say? Are they doing this right? Are they going to get a bad grade on this? So while a, a student should be at home spending time with their family, and like Mr. Gatto said, that they should be interacting with their parents and learning things from their parents or from wise neighbors. They shouldn't constantly have what's going on in school in their head, but that is exactly what they want to happen. They don't want to give these kids the time to start thinking independently, to start thinking as an individual. So they, they send home all kinds of busy work to keep that child's mind occupied. And, you know, Again, I never really, I didn't ever think about it that way, but it's true. You can't have adequate family time. You cannot have genuine family time if your child is, if their time is constantly being scheduled by an outside source, a source that they start to feel is more important than the family itself. You know, these are things that have to get done. Family gets pushed to the side and where family should be central, that's not the case anymore. School becomes central. And you know, this is something that we, even adults, we, we carry this through into our adulthood. And you know, I do this. How many times when you see, when you meet a new child, and I actually did this today, my son introduced me to a, a new a boy who just moved into the neighborhood a couple of weeks ago, and he came into the yard. And the first thing I said to him was, what grade are you in? And then later on, I asked him, what school did you go to before you moved here? And it's amazing to me that, you know, I'm, I'm pretty awake to, to like the, the reality of the schools. Yet even I defaulted to that because it's like that's the only thing that we can associate with kids is school. Everything is about school, just completely surrounding everything. Now, if you take this idea of surveillance to today, it has an even scarier impact because it's not just about a student knowing that they can't hide at school. It's not just about the fact that they're bringing home this work that is going to keep them occupied and always make them feel like the school is watching even when they're at home. And you know, I think a lot of the effect of, you know, when parents are given papers, you, you have to if, make sure that your child reads 15 minutes and then you have to sign it. You have to initial their, their homework books. And you know, it's just this constant 
list of things that you have to do to prove to teachers that these kids are doing what they're supposed to be doing, you know, school stuff, also while they're at home. So now, in addition to that, we've got the actual surveillance in our society. You know, and what is the biggest source of that right now that kids are pretty much guaranteed to be on? Social media. And I cannot even count the number of stories recently that I have heard of school students who were posting things on social media that their school got wind of, that the school did not like that they were doing. And students are actually starting to get disciplined at school, to have infractions um, brought against them at school for things that they are doing in their own private personal life. And you know, that's scary. How, how did it come to be that a student who is at home can, can be held responsible by the school? And, you know, this reminds me of my kids. One, I like it too. There's a cartoon called The Legend of Frosty that we've watched like a million times. And I remember at the one part of that cartoon, a little boy, he, he stayed out past curfew. And the school got wind of it and the school the next day put him in detention and gave him a dunce cap because he stayed out late. He was out past curfew. And I remember thinking to myself, every time I, that I watch this with my kids, I think this, how can they punish him for, for something that happened while he wasn't even in school? Yeah, I, I really do think this deeply about cartoons. But, you know, the fact is, is that it's happening. It's happening right now. There are students everywhere who are, are getting in trouble for things that have absolutely nothing to do with school. They are not happening on school grounds. They are not bringing the school name into the things that are happening. Yet schools have enough control that, yeah, they they can suspend students for things that they don't agree with them doing in their in their private lives. You know, and am I saying that I, I agree with like the things that the kids are doing? Um, a lot of times, no, but, but the thing is, is that it is a parent's responsibility to discipline a child. If they're in school, okay, you know, the, the school is there. The school is supposed to be the authority figure while they are there. But schools, I, I have said this so many times and I made, you know, a post about this and I made a video about this and I said, you know, you, parents, you have to watch out because school is usurping your parental rights. That is really happening now. Schools are usurping parental rights by taking it upon themselves to discipline kids for things that they are not doing in school. Why? Because the schools have an awesome chance for surveillance now because they've got social media. All they need to do is type in a student's name or to follow a student and right there laid before them is everything that that child or teenager is doing while they're not in school. And you know that chances are that, you know, they're, they're probably posting pretty much everything that they're doing because that's just the way that the world works. I don't agree with that. I don't like that. I do it a little bit too much. But that's that's the way that, that things are happening right now. And schools are using that to their advantage. And it's a scary situation to be in. And it's something that I think a lot of parents don't realize. It's something that I, I, I could say that I don't think a lot of kids realize it. But I think that deep down, these kids can feel it. They, I think they do feel that pressure of always having that eye on them. And think about even as an adult. I don't know if you still get them. I still get dreams about school, about that there was a test that I didn't study for, or that I don't remember what class comes next, or that I can't remember where my class is at, or that I'm at a new school and I don't know where anything is. I still get these dreams about school. And you know what? They're never good dreams. And the funny thing is, is that I liked school. I cried when I graduated high school because I didn't want that time to end. But... The only dreams that I get as an adult about school are nightmares. And I think that this, this whole idea of constantly feeling like your entire life as a child is focused on school. School is the only thing. School is the authority. School is that all seeing eye that knows everything. That's not a healthy way to live. And I think it's something that has to be changed. Anyway, that's all that I have for you today. Again, I want to thank you so much for supporting me. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. Anyway, I hope you have a great day.